I must say that before the development of these documents, we had NGOs in the sector. Some NGOs, I must be specific, who do not follow the national standards in terms of technical specification in delivering these boreholes or water points to communities. We also had certain organizations, not necessarily NGOs, but also within the public sector, that do not know the existence of these documents and just go around dotting boreholes and water points without following the necessary standards. So we believe that with these documents, they will serve as a good guide in getting these NGOs and sector agencies or public sector agencies in delivering quality facilities to communities, which will give them services that would last. And what has been the process of developing revising and consolidating all these documents? Yeah, it has been quite a long and um, tiring process, I must say. It has taken us for well over a year. But it involves, first of all, having the technical team within CWSA reviewing these documents to see that they contain the whole gamut of uh, requirements to call something a technical document. And then thereafter, we now consulted the sector stakeholders so sector stakeholders from national, regional, to even district level in uh, sensitizing them, exposing them to what is in the document and getting their views. If we even had to put this into zones so that we could cover the whole country. So we have the northern zone, we have the middle and the southern zone. So it has been quite a long process in getting people to understand what is in there and to contribute to make them quite a solid and uh, lasting documents. So what key documents are we talking about here? Here we are talking about what we call the technical guidelines and standards. That is looking at what kind of um, facilities do we need to have and what are the technical specifications for those documents. Also what we call the project implementation manual, which is basically telling you the specific requirements if you want to enter the community water and sanitation sector. And then we also have the National Community Water and Sanitation Strategy document, which is stepping down the national policy into very clear uh, language and uh, putting flesh into the guidelines so that people can understand. So these are just three, but there are a lot more than that. Prompted the review of these documents? Yeah, in the first place, uh, Mass is the funding. We had available support from Triple S, so that sort of kick started the process. But basically, what started it was that we needed to have something that would serve as guidance to anybody coming to the sector to understand it. And also, also wanted to ensure that we are a serious organization that has documents that it works with. So these are the two key things that made us to start this whole process of reviewing the documents and putting them on the shelves. In the second half of the year, we are going to have all these documents ready for dissemination and for use by the sector. How do you envisage that is going to uh, impact on how the sector works? Yes. No, for me, uh, to, to have a, a great impact, in the first place, the knowledge. People knowing that, yes, we have these documents and these are the contents. So knowing and playing according to the knowledge, that for me will make the impact. And then again, it will help us in terms of our monitoring and enforcing. Now that we have an ally in play, which has given us the regulatory power. So if you have the document, then you can go and with the document, you enforce the regulation. And people who do not follow it, they have a basis to prosecute them.